Hello everyone. I've had a surprise package arrive. So I thought let's just dive straight in and do just an unboxing today. I received from Idea Factory International the Automo game My Next Life as a Villainess. All routes lead to doom. Subtitle Pirates of the Disturbance. Now that's a rather long title so there's a bit to unpack here. If you're watching this video, chances are you already know about the villainess. You may already be a fan of the anime. Now my next life as a villainess is by now what's called a multimedia franchise. There are a variety of ways that you can enjoy the story, and we'll go through that in a moment. So this is the box I was sent. Thank you very much for the surprise. And it looks uh, similar in uh, design and size uh, to other limited editions I've had from My Dear Factory. It is not very heavy. I have not checked any details, so I'm going in blind. As you can see from the cover, it is a visual novel in the otome genre, so generally romance with a suite of eligible bachelors and one pirate. Pirates are always good from my point of view. Dragons for me are at the top of the apex, but pirates are pretty high up for me too. If you like watching anime, you've probably noticed that uh, over the last one or two years, there have been a burgeoning number of uh, stories in animated form with titles that are trending towards the very, very, very long, sometimes having comically awkward phrasing, uh, which is of course deliberate. There seems to be a bit of a um, competition for who can come up with the longest title. This is by no means a very long title, <laughs> if we look at it that way. Uh, my Next Life as a Villainess, All Roots Lead to Doom, already is a very clear signal what the story, the whole theme might be about. And if you have any familiarity with visual novels, you know that there are flags for events. There are flags for increasing your romance factor or your affection, your relationship with someone, often shown as little hearts bubbling up on the screen when you get it right. But there are also not so good flags that are often referred to as doom flags because they lead to bad endings. So as you can see from the title already, there is clearly a humorous approach intended towards this conundrum in visual novels. How do you avoid the doom flags and get to the good flags? So while I wrestle with the cellophane, let me just fill you in on how this whole villainess craze started. I had heard of this particular title. I have in fact watched a little bit of the anime. But what I found to my surprise, there are already so many visual novels and anime available that all focus on the villainess angle. Now, most of these stories use the isekai framing or device where you, you know, go into an alternate world. We could say there is already a subgenre available in the vast isekai genre that could be called specifically the villainess isekai subgenre. That's how popular this thematic angle has become. But as far as I'm aware, my next life as a villainess is quite possibly the one 
most people know of, or that's the one that is the most popular, I think, from what I hear. So this story, My Next Life as a Villainess, or in Japan it's often shortened to Hamefura, which is a bit easier and quicker, so I might stick to that from now on. So Hamafura was originally, and still is, a series of light novels, written by Satoru Yamaguchi and illustrated by Nami Hidaka. So they started publication in 2014, and later it was licensed for the West by the publisher J Novel Club. So far, 13 volumes have been released. Now, I'd never heard of J Novel Club, but I noticed that inside the game case, there is a voucher for redeeming a chapter of the original uh, light novel. And that's a cute little collectible card, which Idea Factory always sends out with um, their limited editions. And this one is specifically for this game. Looking at the game case, there is a reversible cover. And I think this is actually a nice choice. So, in addition to the light novel series, there was also, later on, a manga published, and, of course, the all-important anime. So, as I said, multimedia franchise, which means all the usual um, Japanese protections are in place for, uh, you name it, uh, voice actors, music, the copyright to the story, etc., The game, by the way, features the same voice actors as in the anime, which would be a real draw card for fans, I imagine. But unfortunately, it means that restrictions are in place for showing any gameplay. This is a bit unusual in that I can't show you what I have played so far. So to get you up to speed, if you don't know the background to the story, how the story is set up, I will just run a little bit of the trailer that explains who the all-important main character, the villainess, is. My Next Life as a Villainess, All Roads Lead to Doom, is a wholesome series about friendship, magic, and a cheeky bit of romance. With the upcoming release of My Next Life as a Villainess, All Roads Lead to Doom, Pirates of the Disturbance from Automate, now is a good time to give a rundown of the series itself. This is Katerina Clays, the only daughter of the noble Clays family from the Kingdom of Sorcia. She wasn't exactly the nicest person to be around, often throwing tantrums when she didn't get her way, until one day at the age of eight, she fell and hit her head, causing her to suddenly regain memories of her past life. A life where she was a 17-year-old high school girl who enjoyed playing the Otome game Fortune Lover. She tragically died after a traffic accident and was somehow reincarnated as Fortune Lover's villainess. This is quite a shock as you can imagine, especially when Katerina was now aware that her role within the game would result in her death or exile. So began her quest to avoid such terrible fates. She attempted various countermeasures to ensure she would be protected from any and all doom flags. Some of these doom flags take in the form of various boys she encounters, the love interests from Fortune Lover, who were responsible for her death or exile in the original game. So there you have it, just a simple slice of life series with plenty of magic, friendship and great characters. You can watch the first and second season of the anime now on Crunchyroll, read the light novels, check out the manga and look forward to playing the official game coming out November 28th. The splash screen for the game tells us quite clearly that this is not one of those adaptations uh, where the game basically retreads um, the story from the novel or anime. That is not the case. Uh, This is a non-canonical story, but it is set in the world of Hamafura. Most of the important characters uh, crop up, 
but there are also at least two new characters. I would say this is very, very clearly aimed at people who already enjoy either the light novel or the anime. So does that mean it's not at all accessible to someone who's not into the Hamafura, My Next Life as a Villainess um, story so far? Actually, I'd have to say they've done it pretty well. It is easy to get into. One reason why it's so easy is that it's incredibly humorous and light-hearted. I would describe uh, Hamafura as a really, really light, fluffy souffle, or the macaroon of Otome. All you really need to do to be able to get into the visual novel, this is coming from me because I wasn't an existing fan, and all I did was watch the first two episodes of the anime. And in fact, it's the first episode that will give you all the crucial background you need, really. From then on, it would be easy to step into the story of the visual novel. I would actually recommend you do check out episode one of the anime, because I think it's actually really good. I watched it twice. I watched it some time ago when I first um, heard about this new anime. And I thought, oh yeah, this is clever, this is cute. And well, I've got about 101 anime to watch, so I put it aside. But when this box arrived, I re-watched the first episode and then went on to the next one and looked at it really closely. And people always ask, well, what makes one anime different from the other one? What's special about this one when there's a dozen other ones all dealing with this villainess setup and so on? I always think the difference is in the quality of the writing, how the characters are presented, how the dialogue is worded, how the humor is brought across, the design and structure of the story. In the first episode, several things happen. There are shifts between two worlds, as you can imagine, because it's isekai, and it's all handled superbly. I thought it was really clever. While not being, you know, clever clogs, look at me how clever I am. No, it's the humor that carries you through. That's the important thing. And I found it really funny. Having a main character who is fixated on food above all else. Katerina herself is a girl who enjoys food, gardening, food, reading books with Sophia, food, and yeah, food. She really likes food. Well, I I thought that was incredibly comical. Um, I'm very food focused myself, so I really identified with our main character, Katerina, the villainess, who is, well, finds herself in, suddenly in the role of villainess inside a visual novel romance game. So for me, that kind of humour can take me a long way. Uh, I thought after a while, well, this is going to get a bit repetitive and, you know, the humour will wear thin. But oddly enough, it didn't for me. I uh, Maybe other people may not find it so funny. You all know humour and jokes impossible to categorize. Everybody responds differently. It's a very, very personal thing. But I really enjoyed it. It wasn't a lot of laugh out loud humor, but I was sort of chuckling along the whole time. That type of humor. So what's inside the box? Now, I have said in my unboxing videos before that Idea Factory do make a very nice steel box. The ones I've had so far have all been really good quality and just excellent design. So let's have a look at this one. So the front image shows us in the center 
our heroine, our villainous heroine, Katarina. I think you can see straight away from her expression uh, that she is a very outgoing, vivacious personality. She loves life. She loves food. She loves seeing new things and meeting new people. She's just delightful to be around, really. She can also be occasionally a bit, I wouldn't say airheaded, but um, she misses the obvious cues, especially socially, which naturally leads to humorous situations. The three smaller ladies you see here, they are more the good ones, the nice characters who in a normal visual novel you would guide through choppy waters to their true endings and their true romance. Whereas Katerina has been saddled with the much more difficult role of the character who tries to foil the nice girls and their true endings and tries to grab the desirable bachelor for herself, selfishly. And the inside artwork gives us labels with the names of the, the six male characters. <laughs> Uh, so, as I would expect, the steel case is sturdy. I've recently come across some where the steel is so thin, they're kind of bendy. Yeah, I don't go in for bendy steel cases. No, this one is nice and firm, and it has a proper spine with the title on it, if you wish to display it that way. Uh, so all I can say is this is up to the standards that I would expect and I'm accustomed to. What does the second layer bring us? Soundtrack. Uh, you know what I do with soundtracks, so I will try and put some music in the background from that. That's the inside of the case. Disc 2 uh, with the actual audio tracks. Disc 2 official soundtrack, 19 tracks. Now, disc one is an audio drama. I will check it, but uh, it sounds like it might be in Japanese, but you can follow it via translation available on the Idea Factory website. Uh, but I will check that and will confirm it. The story in this drama CD takes place in a parallel setting apart from the main game. It is not canon to the original story from the novel. Please understand that it is not canon to the original story from the novel, comic or TV animation. So that's nice. You've got something completely different yet again. Or as Katerina would probably say, a very tasty snack. The final layer... They have kept to the essentials for a limited edition. Art book, soundtrack, a special item, steel book here, and of course the box. So that's the illustration they've chosen for the art book. I see. Good choice. Uh, 48 pages. As you can see, it's hardback. Now, first up, there's some pictures from the gallery, but then you get the character pages. And they're, of course, always the most interesting, really. I won't show you too much, just in case uh, there's anything uh, spoilerish that I'm not supposed to be showing. But the first one is the main character, Katerina Clays. Uh, that's her page. Her little character tagline says, Everything looks delicious. I don't know where to start. <laughs> so that's Katerina's love of food. Then follow The Gentleman, and as I've seen some other visual novels do recently, they're sort of colour-coded a bit by their attires. The other very important female character is called Maria Campbell. That's her blondie here. And she is, in fact, the protagonist, the goodie, in the fictional uh, visual novel called Fortune Lover, inside which Katerina thinks she is trapped. I have played 
the common route and one main story arc route. And I did all the endings for that. I wanted to get a good idea how they'd done it. So I went through to the true ending, the good ending, the regular or normal ending, and the doom ending. Yes, the bad one. There are only two options for Katerina's fate, according to that visual novel, Fortune Lover. She is either exiled or she faces death. So naturally, she does everything she can to avoid that fate, but you might stumble into it occasionally uh, and get that uh, doom ending. And, and I certainly had a look at it. And like most bad or doom endings in visual novels, let's face it, there is not much more you can do or say when a character's demise is involved. I shan't go any further, my lips are sealed. But the other endings open up room for some more interesting speculation. I got the impression that the writers weren't just chucking out a quick ending. You know, we've done the true ending, that's fine. But the other ones, you know, sometimes uh, I've had visual novels where... There are too many endings, and it's not satisfying if if the ending doesn't really tell you very much. It doesn't have any kind of satisfactory conclusion, whichever way it goes. That wasn't the case here. They had actually thought about it and brought up something that I still found interesting and entertaining. So that is all I can tell you about my experience with the game. It's called Pirates of the Disturbance because this is the completely new story element they were talking about in the splash screen. And naturally, it involves um, a pirates. And pirates can, of course, also be a very attractive. So overall, from uh, my experience so far of Hamifura, both from the anime and this visual novel, uh, I would say that the emphasis, the prime emphasis, is on comedy. If you need some really light-hearted, fun time out, then this is probably a good pick. It's one of those stories that, while it obviously uses and respects the conventions of the visual novel, it also constantly subverts them. And that's really what provides what I would call a delicious frisson. It goes just a bit deeper and therefore makes really for a more satisfying fluffy snack, I would say. This is not a story where we get a lot of comedy from the by now well-known fourth wall breaking. No, this one is more into breaking the fifth wall. And that's, of course, a bit more tricky. But with having that isekai set up and having characters transported to inside another visual novel, this becomes possible. For example, one important important mechanism while you play the visual novel is in each chapter you have Katerina having to make a really important decision. Do I go this way or that way? Uh, There are lots of minor decisions throughout each chapter, but there's one big one. This is visualized as her sitting down as chairman with a moustache and having I think four other Katerina personalities sitting around the conference table, each one representing a different part of her personality. You know, the fearful one, the happy-go-lucky one, the thoughtful one, etc. And they all pile in, giving their thoughts on, on what might be involved if you proceed this way or that way, all the ins and outs are being discussed, and then you get to make the final decision. So those are clever narrative devices, I think. 
Another thing I noticed is that I often find the final moments when you get to the good or the true ending a bit sort of soppy and also very stereotyped. A lot of uh, Japanese writers for visual novels seem to have a dictionary with stock phrases about what two lovers would say to each other when they finally get together and realise they do love each other. You see the same phrases, word for word, popping up in this novel and that visual novel, and it gets a bit embarrassing because you think, haven't they got anything original to say to each other? Well, I was happy to see that, once again, they made an effort here. They actually wrote a dialogue that suited the characters and reflected what they were going through. The whole sort of cliched phrasing was really kept to a minimum. I was actually surprised about that, I have to say. Uh, But that was definitely a a tick in my book, yeah. I don't really like cliched writing. It just turns me right off. Overall, I think I have to say it actually surprised me. As you know, I'm while I do like visual novels, I'm not much into those that are just mainly or 99% romance and that's it. I like them more as a hybrid with adventure or a supernatural element, a setting that makes it also interesting as a story in its own right, not just two people, you know, finding each other. Uh, And you certainly um, get that here, including even some magic, because uh, some of the characters do have magical ability. So that can add a surprising twist to some of the events. But overall, I would say there is one clear winner in this visual novel, and that's the food. I wouldn't mind a buffet of some of those dishes uh, that I mentioned there. So that was my unboxing with my first impressions and some rambling comments as usual for my next life as a villainess. All routes lead to doom, Pirates of the Disturbance. Thank you very much again to Idea Factory for sending that over. And I think I'm hungry now. Any muffins available, Poodle Pa? If you've made it this far, I reckon you may already be a fan of Hamifura, My Next Life as a Villainess. Please let me know uh, what you think of the game, of the anime, of the limited edition. Tell me about your experience with any type of villainess isekai story. If you've already watched some or read some, what is so appealing about them? I tried to explain what I thought was appealing about this particular one. Are there too many villainess stories now flooding the scene? Is it becoming a fad? It's my first experience with a villainess story, and I've had a good time. Thank you very much, as always for watching and listening. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.